Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open and all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. reading is from the book of Acts. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, everyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to, to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. The message spread through Judea, beginning in Galilee. After the, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. Not to, all, not to all the people, but to us who are chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one who, who was ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testified about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and a victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand reading from Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord.
Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter then came out with the other disciple, and they went toward the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloth lying and the napkin, which had been on his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Saying this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom do you seek? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and said to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak in the name of the risen Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Happy Easter. Yeah. Happy Easter. This week I had a man come up to me as I was dressed in my priestly garb, wearing my black trousers and, and black shirt with my collar and my sport coat. He approached me in the supermarket aisle and he asked me a very simple question. He said, do you really think that you're going to get into heaven? People ask me strange questions all the time. <laughs> So I wasn't offended, I wasn't insulted at all, uh, but the question really gave me pause. It was the middle of Holy Week, it was on Wednesday. We had just finished up our Tenebrae service, which we held here, a service of light and dark. And the last thing we did in that service was to extinguish the Paschal candle. The Paschal candle, which for us is the light of Christ. And in extinguishing it, we acknowledged that in doing so, it was really meaning Christ's death, his last breath. And so in the supermarket, my head and my heart and my soul uh, was thick with fog. And importantly, I'm not lamenting here as if the service that we participated in was uh, a funeral, because it wasn't. But it, but it made me think, what does this mean now? What does it mean now, Christ's death? What does it mean now for me and for us? And then to be approached in the supermarket and to be asked this question. My response to him was this. I don't know. I don't know. But at least right now I have hope. We smiled just a little bit, not too much. I was tired. <laughs> and we parted ways. I think this was his, his, his uh, gig, though. I think this is what he did every time he saw a clergy. He would come up to a clergy person 
and ask this kind of question. Interestingly though, this is only one half of my story from that same Wednesday night. I'm gonna to get to the rest of it just a little bit later. Now as a Christian, I believe that everything God gives to us is a blessing. No matter how challenging or wonderful, no matter what it is. It's a gift of opportunity, sometimes easy to see for the time and sometimes more difficult to see relative to distance and perspective. And in this instance, this question posed by this man was a gift because it helped me in the middle of my own fog of heart, mind, and soul to remember that I indeed, that we indeed have hope. It's the realization of this hope that we recognize not only the significance of Christ's life, death, and resurrection, but what it is that it now means for us and the future of our living. This season of Holy Week and the weeks leading up to it and the months leading up to it, the whole season of Lent, mind you, it has the ability to kind of wind you up in a way where you're involved and engaged and in it it's almost as though, well, from a priest's standpoint, we have blinders on. And I'm sure all of us in our lives have occasions like this where we're so occupied or preoccupied with something that it limits our vision and our sight. But priests, for me anyway, I become so caught up in the development of things that sometimes I need a reminder I need a reminder of what we really are being called into to do and to be. I realized this probably most succinctly this weekend when we were in the parking lot for the Easter egg hunt. We had about 300 individuals in attendance. And the kids were really uh, juiced up a bit, um, partially by the candy. <clears throat> partially by Virginia, who was encouraging them to be juiced up a bit. And the kids were chanting, um, and they were told that if they could get their chanting loud enough, they were calling out a certain bunny. If their chanting could get loud enough that the bunny would eventually emerge from his den, which is the Marco Smith building. <laughs> and so eventually the fever pitch reached uh, its point, and the bunny appeared. And the kids yelled and screamed and cheered. And Father Elliot said, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. <laughs> he did say that, but it is, it is a joke. But I think it certainly speaks to where our heads have been and where our heads are at. A comment to say that, yes, it is certainly all about Jesus. It is certainly all about Jesus. But it's also about the people that were there and the, it's about the people that are here now. And it's also a little bit about the bunny. It's all sort of mixed up, everything in between. It's a comment about our religiosity and our personhood and the significance of our community. This week has wound us up in a way to understand the realization of Jesus Christ and our lives in the most amazing and creative ways. Purposefully driven, challenging us to be new and different people, creative in a way that we do not fully comprehend or understand. And again, this year, just as every year, we are challenged by what God continues to put in front of us. But I have solace. I have solace knowing when I look up and out at the body of this congregation and I see the people here, the people here that love one another so much, the people here who are willing to do so much for one another, the people here that are reaching out beyond us, and in the middle of that, in the midst of challenging news and difficult situations and even celebrations, I'm reminded again and again and again that we have hope. In the midst of the other pieces of the world that seem as though they're falling apart, this place and this space is holding on to something sacred and special. And yet still a little bit unknown. And that's okay because we don't get all the answers. But that's being carried by us, carried by each and every one of us. 
but not just in this building. It's carried by all Christian people. All the churches right now who are saying the same creeds as we are at the same time, hearing a, hearing a variation of the same sermon but in a different place, and all of the communities that surround us, all the houses and the homes and the neighborhoods, all of it, all doing that important work. And in the midst of that, I know that Jesus is there. And I know this because Jesus has always been there. And Jesus will always be there. In a world where we can't figure things out, where we can't know everything, we can't fix everything, and certainly we cannot worry about everything. There's just too much to worry about. We can know that God is there because God has always been there. And that he is loving us and caring for us. And again, this is how I know this. So back to my story. A nice long 12 hour day, a tenebrae service, a gentleman in the bread aisle asking me if I'm gonna go to heaven. And then I'm reminded of faith and hope. As I walked out uh, to my truck that evening, I was rushed by a woman in the parking lot who saw my caller and she saw me entering the store. She had waited for me to exit the store and she rushed over to me and she said, I need you, I need you, I need you. I need you to pray for me. She said, her father is dying and I don't know what to do. I don't even know how to approach this. How does this go? You're a priest, right? So he stood right there in the middle of the parking lot and we prayed. And in that parking lot, we asked God not to intercede on her behalf for what it is that she wanted or what it is that she needed, but we asked for God that his will might be done, that her father's own salvation journey might be accomplished. And we prayed for this, not because I learned this in some class somewhere. Ironically, they don't teach us these things in class. And I didn't learn this from some uh, wise sage of wisdom and experience. That you don't really get that from this. I, we prayed that way because that moment, in that moment, we remembered in the midst of everything else, the only thing that we had together was hope. And I think that's where we are today. Jesus Christ is risen. And walking through a doorway, we have a new hope for a new Christ in a new world. And a new way of being that we never ever thought possible. And through the inspiration of that hope, we continue to reach out. And in doing so, we love one another. We build one another up. We support one another the best way and sometimes the only ways that we know how. And if you're sitting in this congregation today and you're intrigued by this way of living, this way of being, you should come here and see what it's all about. My brothers and sisters, Christ is risen. Alleluia. Hallelujah. Please stand. Together we affirm our faith in the words of the baptismal covenant. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you per persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please sit or kneel for the prayers of the people. The prayers of the people are page 9 in your bulletin. High and holy God, robed in majesty, Lord of heaven and earth, we pray that you will bring justice, faith, and salvation to all peoples. Lord, hear us. You chose us in Christ to be your people and to be the temple of your Holy Spirit. We pray that you will fill your church with vision and hope. We especially pray for Caroline Church and for the continued discernment of our mission and purpose. We also pray for those preparing for confirmation and their first Holy Communion, especially Benjamin, Wyatt, Noah, August, Sophie, Christian, and Avery. Lord, hear us. Lord, receive us. Your spirit enables us to cry, Abba, Father, affirms that we are fellow heirs with Christ and pleads for us in our weakness. We pray for all those who are in need or distress, especially Katie, Carol, June, Henry, Irene, Nicole, Pam, Lily, Andrew, Kathy, Jack, Wayne, Eileen, Lori, and Sharon. And all those we mention now, both silently and aloud. Thank you. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We lovingly remember and give thanks for all those listed in our Easter flower memorials. Lord, graciously hear us. In the baptism and birth of Jesus, you have opened heaven to us and enabled us to share in your glory. The joy of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit from before the world was made. May your whole church, living and departed, come in a joyful resurrection in your city of light. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and the protection of God. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please greet one another with a sign of Christ's peace. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, Penny. Happy Easter, Bill. Happy Easter. 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 Welcome. Happy Easter. Please be seated. Welcome to this 14th service of Holy Week. It's been a fun ride. We're so, so happy and delighted that you've decided to celebrate Easter with us today and so thankful for you uh, being here with us. Uh, in your service bulletins, uh, there is an announcement page. It contains 
all the things going on in this very vibrant community. Um, some of the things that are not mentioned on here is uh, adult education by way of Bible, uh, Bible study, which won't happen this next week, but is typically on Tuesdays in the evening at what time? 6.30. At 6.30. And then also we have an online Bible study on Fridays. All of that information is online. I do want to draw your attention to some fun things that are coming up. Um, we have plans for a summer theater club. Uh, and so uh, the information is contained in the bulletin. We also have a Lego Builders Camp, which personally excites me. Uh, that's pretty, pretty exciting. And then we're also pl planning a kayak outing later in the summer. These, lots of programs for youth uh, here and lots of uh, wonderful ministries afoot in our community. And uh, it's really a, a vibrant parish. And so we invite you uh, upon leaving to maybe grab one of the one sheets that we have out there if you have not already received it or fill out a, a card today if you'd like some more information about what's going on in this parish. We also participate in the delivery of home communion and other spiritual counseling. So if any of those things sound of interest, please let us know. We'll be happy to do that. Today, uh, we've had over 300 folks come through our doors for Easter, and it's a wonderful occasion, this being the 301st year of celebrating uh, Easter in the life of this parish. Uh, we are the second oldest Episcopal church in the United States in continuous use. Uh, and so that's a wonderful, wonderful thing, and that tradition continues on with us. Please know that at this altar that everyone is welcome, no matter where you walk with Christ. In order to receive Holy Communion, simply place your hands out like so to receive the, the wafer, consume the wafer, and then assist the chalice to your lips to take a sip of wine. If you choose to have Holy Communion only in one type, only bread or only wine, that's perfectly fine. That's Holy Communion. Um, and uh, you can uh, also reverence the cup. If you do not wish to drink from the cup, you can reverence the cup by simply placing two fingers on the bottom of the cup. Even if you're still undecided, know that you're still welcome at this altar, and you can still come forward and simply cross yourself like so in order to receive a blessing. My brothers and sisters, walk in love as Christ loved us, giving yourself an offering and sacrifice to Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
that's the holy obligation. We have hot cross buns outside after the service, and I ask for your, your divine assistance in helping us to take them home. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true paschal lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he's won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and with archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, and to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and he offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you do this, do it for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, saying, Christ has died. 
Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your holy people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may be able to faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity and in constancy and in peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, in the language of our heart, as our Savior Jesus Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep, keep the feast. Alleluia, alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed upon him in your heart with faith and with thanksgiving. Amen. Please come forward. body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Preserve thy body and thy soul to everlasting life. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Preserve thy body and thy soul. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Stand in the far corner if you would. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Preserve thy body and thy soul to everlasting life. Blessing of God Almighty in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you. Preserve thy body and thy blood. The body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you, Bruce. The body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given to you. Amen. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given to you. Amen. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given to you. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given to you.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and to serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you now and always. Amen. Please stand.